All right. We're now going on to M9, which is all about molecular recognition. So it states something like molecular recognition just goes on from the theme that we've been looking at, at how important three-dimensional uh, proteins, three-dimensional molecules are. Okay. What do we know about structure, Jamie? Oh. Any of the Jamies in the room. What, is, what does structure do? Uh, Linda? It controls the function. Excellent. So structure determines function. So, molecular recognition is just all about the processes of recognizing other three dimensional shapes. How do we do that? Well, we need complementary in shape to that molecule. So, think about locking key. The only time that that lock will unlock or have an effect is if the correct three dimensional key fits it. So, we have some examples that we're going to look at. I think M9 focuses on cell surface receptors. So again, this one goes back to our, you know, our drug use. Okay, we have cell surface receptors. So I'm just going to quickly draw a lipid bilayer. You know, my sister from last year. Hope she's watching. Okay, so here's our lipid bilayer. On the surface, we have molecules that need to recognize things that are outside of the cell. Either because we want to bring them in, because we want to cause changes within the cell, or because we're being attacked. It's the enemy. So we need to be able to respond to things outside of our cell. And the way that we do that is by having proteins embedded in the membrane. So we'll have proteins embedded some have these saccharide molecules, so sugar molecules attached. We call these glycoproteins. And so on top of these protein molecules, they have these oligosaccharides, which just means eight to nine sugar molecules attached. And they're going to respond to things touching the surface. Okay? So they're going to be able to respond to things, molecules touching the surface. Why might that be important, Luke? Why might that be important? To realize what they're touching. Yep. Uh, so they can figure out how to do it. Excellent. Has anyone heard of an autoimmune disease before? I think they feel pain. Yeah, but you No? Okay. Autoimmune. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Do you know what it involves? So autoimmune? Um Okay, I'll explain it for you. Basically, what I mean, Matt, means that we have cells that when they touch other cells or other parts of the body, our body recognises it as being foreign. And then it mounts an attack against it. So autoimmune means we're basically attacking ourselves. That's very bad. Okay? If you attack yourself from the inside out, there's no way of really helping you. Okay, so lots of autoimmune diseases are uh, incurable. Um, some drugs we can use to knock out our immune system completely, but then we become susceptible to other things like viruses and bacterial infections. 
So our body needs to be able to respond appropriately to outside either cells or molecules. So one of the ways we do that is by having these lipoproteins. We also have lipoproteins. So instead of being carbohydrates, they're lipids. And others are just proteins. So these proteins, because of their three-dimensional shape, it means they're complementary to a specific substrate, a specific molecule, and then it will cause a cascading effect either inside the cell and will cause change to happen. So if this is a hormone, let's say Matt Hallandau really taking his football really seriously, he wants to get bigger, bigger muscles, he might inject himself with some steroids. Okay. If he does that, steroids are going to uh, bind themselves to the surface, depending on what type of steroid it is. If it's a lipid-soluble steroid, it might pass straight through and not even have to bind to the surface. But it's going to cause this cascading effect of changes in the cells, which might go, oh, we need to produce more muscle. Muscle, 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 muscle. Get bigger, get bigger, get bigger. Okay, and that's what happens. You sort of start producing muscle without actually lifting and you recover quicker. So that's all because of this hormone that attaches to our surface and then has an effect. Okay? So we've got cell surface receptors. Has everyone got that down? Yes, sir. Would that mean that the muscle cells will just divide quicker? It's either the muscle cells will divide, so that might be a response, or it might be uh, an upregulation of a specific gene that we transcribe, or it might be uh, increased translation of um, mRNA producing a protein, we just get some effect. And as scientists, we look at the effects of knocking out genes to see what they do. And we can see what happens if we increase them. Next, I'll rub that one off. Uh, thank you. So we've got cell surface receptors. We have antibodies that sort of take on this shape, like a Y. Okay. So our body produced millions of these different antibodies. Okay? These antibodies recognize only one antigen. Okay? So we make all these different ones just in case we get some kind of bacteria in the blood or in, in our tissue, then the antibody covers the um, antigen or the bacteria and flag and go, this is an issue. So then other cells can then recognize the antigen on top and then mount an immune response. Okay, so again, three-dimensional shape of the antibody is specific to an antigen, which will then cause a response. Okay, so we've got antibodies. Okay, so they have special three-dimensional regions that are different. Therefore, they can bind and then cause a response. Zane, what would happen if we didn't have antibodies? So we die when you're babies because all these things would get to us and kill us off. Yeah, we couldn't recognise a disease as being something bad. Okay? If we recognise something as being bad, we can make a response to it. Fortunately, as a baby, we don't need antibodies because we're still drinking breast milk and we're receiving antibodies through the breast milk. Okay? But we need to eventually start producing our own antibodies. And we've got a very clever system. Once an antibody recognises a potential antigen, then our body makes more of it. And it stores it there ready for if we get infected again, then we've got all the antibodies ready to go, they divide much quicker, and it initiates specific B cells and T cells to fight that particular disease. So, very good. Cool. Next. So, 
back to our cell membrane. So instead of having cell surface receptors, we've actually got receptors embedded in the membrane. And they might look something like this. Okay, so even now we call these protein channels. We'll learn a little bit these when we a little bit more about these when we start looking about movement across the membrane. But we have molecules outside the cell that are either charged or too big to pass through the membrane. So we need to facilitate them coming through. So we have these protein channels. Now these protein channels have a specific 3D shape or 3D structure that recognises only specific molecules and lets them through. So all I'm doing is giving you examples of where this specific 3D structure allows for molecular recognition allows for recognising other molecules and then allowing them to pass through or to have an effect. So this one is protein channels. system. Is that a, a direct way of sending a message? If I send a hormone through the body, through the blood, is that a direct form of communication, do you think? Raymond? Okay, let's say I wanted to send you a message, Raymond. And I'm going to use our plumbing network. Okay? Now, we all have the same network of plumbing. All the water comes from the same place and all your toilet water basically goes in the same area. So provided you live around this neighbourhood, Raymond, I'm going to send you a message through the toilet system. Okay? I'm going to put it in the water system. So it's going to come either maybe out of his cap, it's going to be a small molecule, maybe a skittle. <laughs> and I'm going to put it in the water system, up in the hills, because it's going to come down, and then when you turn on your tap, Raymond's going to get possibly my skittle. <laughs> what do you think the chances of my skittle finding, finding Raymond? Very slim. Very slim. So it's not a very direct form of sending a message, is it? But that's how we use hormones in the body. Let's say 
we had our water source, and I'll put a billion Skittles in. Would Raymond get a Skittle? Yeah. Who else would get Skittles? Everyone. Everyone. So if I only want Raymond to get a Skittle, I need to be able to make a complementary receptor for that Skittle to have an effect. So when maybe in the, uh, the tap that Raymond uses, maybe it's the only tap that allows the Skittle to come out, and then everyone else's Skittle doesn't. Or maybe once he's got the Skittle, it's only Raymond's mouth that can enjoy the Skittle. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but that is how our body works. Upstream, around our brain, we have organs that just pump hormones into the blood and just send it everywhere. It can't tell just to go to your fingertip or just to go to your foot or just to go to your arm, it goes everywhere. It relies on the target cells having the receptor to be able to bind to that hormone and then have an effect. So any cells that we don't want to have an effect, they just don't have the receptor. That's molecular recognition. Send something out, make sure the ones that you want to have an effect, they know how to receive the message. Okay, another example might be, is anyone familiar with uh, World War II history? Jamie? Okay, how did some countries send messages? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a, a message of I'm better than you, we can control you, but I'm talking about messages to their own troops. Has anyone seen those like typewriter yeah. things? Does anyone know what they're called? The beepers. The what? Beepers. Morse code. Morse code. It's not what I'm talking about. Typewriter. It's sort of like a telegraph machine, but it has encryption built into it. So, like you were sending a message with a hormone, only specific armies could read these messages because they had the ability to decode it. So now, when you type your password in, you buy something on eBay, it has encryption, so only people with the password can decrypt it, and then only the certain people that are allowed to see the message can. That's how molecular recognition works. The information is sort of encrypted. If you have the right receptor, you can decode it. Okay, M9, done.